Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Los Arcos Hotel on fire. Ooh, I think I saw flames. Um, to recap, this uh, is a hotel that has... Oops. Oh, okay. Well, I can't zoom out or in in this mode, so... You're going to get the whole picture the way it is. Until I figure out how to do that the other way. Oh, yeah, huh? Ugh. Um... Anyway, okay, so let me tell you a story about La Paz. Um, this hotel is closed and has been. No one's been inside of it except bums and the uh, owner and his, and his, well, and the owner's duly appointed paid uh, thugs, shall we say, and police, which means that they're still duly appointed and paid thugs, but not, you know, or not, they're still paid thugs, but not duly appointed. Anyway, <laughs> um... So, this hotel's been closed for, I, I believe, at least 10 years uh, due to a strike by the employees hey, um, who, you know, refused to do, you know, work for this guy for whatever reason. Oh, I'm sure it's, it's, it's all about the bad employees, right? Yeah. Anyway, so, why I know what this is really about and why I say this is uh, insurance fraud, well, here comes the water truck, <laughs> um, is because, um, this town is run by, um, well, by people like Malcolm Neal Schroer Schelling, who basically founded everything about tourism in this town. Um, he founded the, the country of Mexico's private port authority, and he owns Marina de la Paz, which is to your right of screen and off screen. Um, so this place is extremely corrupt, and it's corrupt because an American made it corrupt. It's corrupt for America. I sat down, and you'll... Uh, You'll have the opportunity to listen to this yourself afterwards if you like, or now if you want to just follow the link. But I recorded a conversation I had with the, well, myself and my caregiver had with the CI, with the U.S. consulate, with three representatives of the U.S. consulate, one of whom was obviously the FBI attaché, the other of whom was obviously the CIA attaché, or agent. So um, we told them about all the organized crime going on here, involving Malcolm Neal Schroer showing all the owners of the businesses, all the gringos that are here illegally doing illegal business, and what they're doing around here, treating the Mexicans like crap. And my payment for that was to have my disability taken from me by the U.S. consulate employees, by the way, by their faulty action, and uh, or deliberate, deliberate, deliberate inaction, or deliberate faulty action, whatever. And, um, and then we were illegally detained at the word of the U.S. consulate after we legally claimed property, which was causing us harm and was going to do us benefit if we took uh, took, a or took a, a possession of because it was abandoned and people were harassing us because of it. And the government wasn't giving us what we needed, our refuge case, and the, the land is technically owned by the federal government. So we illegally took that land and the U.S. consulate told these people to throw us in jail and harass the shit out of us with false legal cases paid for by Pedro Alberto Aguilar Bazua. He changed his name so he's not associated with his family anymore because they fucking hate him. And um, the owner of Maria Palmira, whose son killed my friend and caregiver of the property, vigilante, excuse me, of the property, uh, Rafael, I didn't unfortunately get his last name or don't remember it. I'm very bad with names. I, I think I do remember it, but uh, I don't... Uh, but, um... You know, I'm not sure I remember his name, and, and he's dead. And I can't report that. I can't report that they stole my boat that I live on, that I depend on for my health. I can't live anywhere else because of very severe health conditions. Um, they stole that. They stole stuff from it. Pedro Aguilar and the owner of Marina Palmera did that with the help of the U.S. consulate and with the blessing of the police who ignored my 911 calls at the word of Malcolm Neal Schroyer Schoen and his son Daniel Schroyer. So... That's what happened, and now I'm being tortured. Um, my health is in very serious danger. Um, my caregiver was in prison for five months because he had a pistol in the car because he was trying to protect us from these fucking people, and uh, and legitimately so. We're being attacked almost every fucking day by by pangs that are just harassing us for now, but who knows what it's going to lead to, and uh, you know it's just it's ridiculous what we're going through, and. Uh, Sorry about the ringing in there. Uh, didn't think it was supposed to be panoramic. Anyway, I can smell the exhaust fumes. I'm gonna probably get start getting sick here soon because I have a, 
health problem where my body can't process out li lipid soluble toxins. My liver is broken, so I can't eat or be exposed to anything lipid soluble, and no VOCs, anything like that. It, it'll kill me. Uh, if it accumulates, I have to detoxify, chelate. Sorry, I'm starting to have a seizure again. I've been really exhausted the last few days dealing with fucking carnivores. But anywho, um, so that's what's going on here. That's what's really going on here in La Paz. You know, this hotel being on fire, it's just a symptom. You know, you can see the people in the market next to it. They're still there. They're not being evacuated. People's cars are still parked in front of this building that's on fire. You know, the, the fire truck had to go around to not inconvenience the sale. No, you can't interrupt our sale for this fucking hotel. You know, why? Why? Because they all know that it's fucking insurance fraud. They chose to do it on a day when there's a fucking sale there. You know, the people that run the sale knew this was going to happen, and they let the sale happen anyway because they knew it would keep the fire trucks from getting in there and properly investigating the situation. So, you know, I mean, they're putting your fucking life at risk so they can make some money. Gee, who does that sound like? Goddamn fucking psychopaths, man. So, that's what's really behind this place. That's what's really going on here. That's what this fire really is. And that's what's happening to me, and that's how I know. So, finally, for once, I have some footage of something that is going to be published pe somewhere. I'm sure by now they're blanking out the fucking audio. So, but, some people somewhere will get this and see this and share it and finally know what's really going on in La Paz. You know... So, enjoy. Ooh, debris. That's paper. That is paper debris. Hmm. Well, this late in the fire, it's probably insulation or wallpaper or something like that. Uh, it couldn't be a, something that started the fire. Something that started the fire was obviously an accelerant, otherwise you wouldn't have three fire locations in one, one space like that, so... You know, plus the initial smoke was black, all of it. And then it was followed by white, and there's no one putting out the fire. Yeah. Oh, look, a fire truck coming down the street with the uh, sail on it. Oh, inconvenient, isn't it? Oh, no. Oh, boy. Wind's starting to not be as strong, and it's blowing back my way. I'm getting really... Oof. Ow. That hurts. Uh. Oh, look. People are starting to walk away now. And look. Someone's taking a picture, and I'm in the background. What do you think I'm doing? Wrong. Still wrong. <laughs> well, I'm going to pause this one. Let's see if anything gets better.